Hi, I'm Dave Randall with the USF Mattel College of Global Sustainability. And I'm here today with Gary Appleson, the policy coordinator of the Tour de Turtle event that is taking place here at the Barrier Island Center and the Disney Vero Beach Resort this weekend. Hi, Gary. Tell us a little bit about your work in policy. Okay, I'm actually the policy coordinator for the Sea Turtle Conservancy here in Florida. Um, I deal with the laws and policies that are in place and need to be in place to protect turtles in the state of Florida. Protecting turtles in the state is extremely complicated, not only because this is the greatest place in the country for sea turtles, they're on the beach, they're in the water, they're in the lagoons, they're in the estuaries, they're on the reefs, they're, they're in the seagrass beds. So not only are turtles all over, in and around and on Florida's beaches, we have 19 million residents, 100 million tourists, and last year the state of Florida had 800 million beach day visits. More people visit the state of Florida, visit Florida's beaches, than visit any other country's beaches in the world. More people visit Florida's beaches than visit all the theme parks and all the national parks combined. So trying to balance the needs of sea turtles with the needs of tourists, residents, and all the people that come here is quite a feat. And I'm happy to say we're pretty good at maintaining that balance. It's not perfect, but we're pretty good at maintaining it. Um, the difficulty, of course, is Florida continues to grow. We have a very conservative government that is, more, is much more concerned about other things than wildlife protection. So it's constantly a battle to maintain the protections we have and strengthen the protections as Florida becomes, much, becomes more populated and more developed. And as uh, resorts think about developing as tourism industry grows, what are some of the things that new resorts might do as they consider construction to mitigate the damages for these threatened and endangered sea turtles? The, very good idea. The, the large resort corporations have plenty of resources to build in ways that protect wildlife in the state of Florida. The fundamental thing they need to do is twofold. Their buildings need to be set back not only as far as Florida allows. Florida has a setback. You can only go this far to the beach, but that's already too close. You'll see most of Florida's beaches are already critically eroded and the upland structures are already threatened by erosion. And climate change may exasperate that problem. Climate change is already exasperating that problem. So what new developers should do in new developments, especially the mega resorts, they need to go beyond what the state requires and build even further landward than they're required to build. Florida ignores sea level rise. Florida ignores storms and storm frequency and any predictions on future storms in how they develop their coastal development policies. You can build up to the setback line even if there's no beach in front of the setback line. So really conscientious developers that want to do the right thing, resorts that want to do the right thing, they need to be as far back to allow for a 200-year storm surge event. And they need to factor in 100 years of sea level rise, at least the middle range for sea level rise for the next 100 years, so that they will never need to build a seawall in front of their structure. When people build seawalls in front of their structures, they destroy the beach, they destroy it for people, they destroy it for their residents, uh, for their guests, and uh, most importantly, they destroy the beach for sea turtles. So you need to build as far landward as you, as you possibly can. The second thing new develop, development need to do is have state-of-the-art sea turtle friendly lighting. Lighting technology has leapfrogged way past old technology in the last 20 years. Um, lighting technology is a new frontier. You can have LED long wavelength amber colored lighting that is less harmful for sea turtles and provides even more safety on the ground for residents to see, for tourists to see, to feel secure. You get rid of glare. You don't want any light hitting the beach. You don't want any light attracting turtles. And we do this all over the state of Florida. We give grants to high-rises, to condominiums, to residents, to single-family homes, to retrofit their buildings with sea turtle-friendly lighting. And, and really the main thing for sea turtle-friendly lighting is keep it low. Make sure the light is directed low. Keep it shielded so you can't see the bulb and the light source from the beach. And keep it long. That means keep it long wavelength, amber, yellow, 
uh, is long wavelength. White light is short wavelength. Turtles hate white light. Well, they don't hate it. They love it. They do, they're they directed they towards them. white light. So you want to get rid of all that short wavelength lighting, shield your lights, direct the light to where you need it instead of all over the beach, and have it for the entire structure. Build back, have sea turtle friendly light. What about the resorts that are already built? What are some of the things that they can do? They can't uh, obviously move their building back if they're already there. What are some of the things they can do? Um, older structures are always problematic on a, on a dynamic beach, and, and Florida's beaches are extremely dynamic. Um, a lot of structures in Florida will build way too far seaward. Um, and the consequence of that is they end up needing seawalls to protect the building from the ever-increasing surf. Um, so you, it's really hard to build a, move a building back at this stage. So there are still several things they can do. They can retrofit their building and put in new lighting. Get rid of the old lighting and put in new sea turtle friendly lighting. Much more expensive than if it's new construction but very doable and we retrofit old buildings all the time. The other thing they can do is not put any structures any further seaward. Fight the urge to put a deck, a gazebo, a wedding cathedral further near to the beach. Fight that urge, put those structures on the side of the building as far landward as you possibly can. Don't encroach on the beach any more than you already have. The third thing you can do, and this is most important, don't build a seawall. When you think you need a seawall, there are often are other options. Build a dune. Put in money to a pool to re-nourish the beach in front of your building. Put sand on the beach instead of a seawall. A seawall is the easy way out. It's a selfish alternative. It doesn't protect the beach for the citizens of Florida, for the people that come to Florida, and most importantly, it's highly destructive of nesting beach habitat. Um, I guess the third thing that, that old older structures, older resorts can do is aggressively, aggressively educate all their guests on what they should be doing to protect sea turtles and try to brand themselves, brand the resort as a sea turtle friendly green building. What about um, policies, uh, for example, keeping uh, pets off the beaches during uh, sea turtle nesting series or making sure that you don't leave litter uh, that attracts raccoons and other uh, predators for sea turtle eggs, things like that. There's a huge role for everybody to play in protecting sea turtles. For, one of the easiest things is if you live on the beach, you know, have sea turtle friendly lighting. Um, everybody needs to move. Another, another big problem with old and new resorts is they allow people to leave a lot of things on the beach. Tents, lawn chairs, um, carts, wagons, all these, we have dozens and dozens of photographs of turtles being caught in lawn chairs and dying on the beach at night. So enough, everybody should do this, not only resorts but residents that live on the beach, move your materials off the beach at night. Don't dig holes on the beach. We have many pictures of turtles falling in holes on the beach and, and not being able to get out. There's a lot we can do regarding predation. Unfortunately, a lot of things love sea turtle eggs. We bring predators to the beach. We bring, we leave our dogs on the beach, we let our cats roam wild. Most importantly, we feed our dogs and cats, and those attract raccoons and armadillos and coyotes. All three, raccoons, armadillos, and coyotes, eat thousands and thousands and thousands of sea turtle eggs every year in the state of Florida. So Gary, those are great suggestions for both new construction and uh, old refurbishing construction. Tell us a little bit about what people might do that are staying in the resorts, uh, things that I've heard that are dangerous, as pets on the beach that might disturb turtle eggs or leaving trash that might attract raccoons that will then go to turtle eggs. Are there some policies that you can recommend to really address this issue? Um, yeah, sure. The resorts in particular should have very good policies about removing everything off the beach at night. Don't stack all your lawn chairs and your personal watercraft and your surfboards for all your guests out on the beach and leave them there at night. Move all that stuff off the beach at night. It's easy to do if you have the proper equipment. Um, in terms of, of uh, pets, uh, residents and um, uh, residents at the resorts and individual people that, that have homes along the beach or come to the beach and visit, 
Um, don't let your pets roam around the beach at night. Keep your cats indoors. Don't feed these animals outside. When you feed your dogs and cats outside, the dog food or the cat food attracts coyotes, raccoons, and armadillos. Those three animals are the biggest predators of sea turtles in the state of Florida. Those three animals eat thousands and thousands of sea turtles every year in the state, and they're brought to the beach by people that encourage them by not covering their trash cans, leaving their trash out unprotected, and feeding their pets outside. And not just the sea turtles, they dig up the eggs. They dig up the eggs. That's When I say they get the hatchlings, they'll actually catch eggs as the turtle is, the, is dropping it. They'll dig into the nest and pull the eggs out and eat them, or they'll wait until a nest hatches and they'll go after the live hatchlings trying to crawl down the beach. Unfortunately, a lot of animals love sea turtle hatchlings and love their eggs. One last question, uh, Gary. If you could have one new policy in the state of Florida to protect sea turtles, what would that policy be? Um, I, I think if, if I had my wish, it would be for all new development to be much further back than we're currently allowing so that the pressure to build seawalls goes away. Seawalls are, are destroying Florida's nesting beaches and pose the greatest threat to sea turtles in the state of Florida. So build as far back as you can, accommodate for sea level rise, and accommodate for increased storm surge. Thank you very much, Gary. That's very informative, and I uh, hope people will pay attention and act accordingly. You're, you're very welcome, Dave. We all have a role to play in protecting Florida's sea turtles. There is no place really in the United States like Florida when it comes to sea turtles. Thank you, Dave. Thank you.